Woods. Well, we're getting closer to somebody lifting that trophy, that famous old trophy, and it is old 1954, we keep saying it. Rugby League, one of the first out of the blocks for a World Cup. We've enjoyed the adventure so far, and uh, we're going to have another adventure here tonight. The last outing for one of these two sides tonight in this year's competition. Group D reaches its climax. We're into the quarterfinals after this. Papua New Guinea would be favourites, you have to say, to be playing against England at Wigan next Saturday afternoon. But the Welsh know there is a chance. Papua New Guinea fans here tonight, but so are the Welsh. This is going to be good here. It's going to be good. Any John Keir side will be giving its absolute all. And never mind the odds, look at the history. He's inspired one or two great upsets down the year. Is this going to go down in his after-dinner speaking annals? The night the Welsh beat Papua New Guinea by that magic 22 points. We shall see. It's a tall order. We'll uh, not hide behind that fact. It is a hugely tall order. And we pause for a moment for the two anthems here as well tonight. There's an air of determination. Well, they're up against a very good side. the Papua New Guinea captain and this is the way they are lining up tonight just to remind you Papua New Guinea uh, 
Papua New Guinea, first of all, they rest a few tonight. PNG on the bench, Wessa Tanza, Sherwin Tanabe and Jeremiah Simbikan all making their debuts when they come on and Jimmy Nutlick on the wing playing for only the second time at international level. Just a little bit of a gamble knowing what they have to do tonight but resting ahead of what they anticipate being that England matchup on Saturday at Wales where Will Evans and Rodri Lloyd return to the starting lineup. Ollie Olds has recovered from a shoulder injury he suffered against Tonga. Carl Evans on the wing has also had to prove his fitness. Carl Evans has been catching the eye with that uh, terrific performance in, uh, in the last outing against Tonga. Referee tonight is Gerard Sutton. Such judges Belinda Sharp and James Child and our video referee should and when we need him is Chris Kendall. Stage is set, John Keir, he's done everything now. He's prepared his side as best he can, the glasses are on. The fingers will be flicking against the screen if it gets tense and nervous. Can his team deliver here tonight or, as the big expectation is, will Papua New Guinea avoid a 22 defeat or indeed go on to win this game to absolutely guarantee their place in the quarterfinals? Well, he's been making a name to him, Carl Evans, and that's his girlfriend. I'm, I'm, I'm led to believe, I hope we're right, we could be in trouble, but we're led to believe that that's Carl's girlfriend. She'll be proud of what he's, uh, what he's been doing. Just a handful of games with Wakefield after switching from Rugby Union. He played here at this ground at Doncaster Rugby Union before he was snatched up by Wakefield. A couple of games for them, or a handful of games for them. And a real World Cup to remember. 13 seconds of one game together. Players on the pitch, fans in the stands, recognising this anti-discriminatory moment. Find your own guys, keep it, find it. Well, the last time these two sides met, Papua New Guinea won by 50 points to six in Port Moresby five years ago in 35 degrees of heat and 98% humidity. How do they go on a wet Monday night in Doncaster? Well, the next 80 minutes will tell us that. Jonathan Davis and Robbie Hunter-Paul alongside us. Jonathan, first of all, what are you expecting from your Welsh compatriots here? Well, pride, passion, as they have shown in this tournament so far. They've been into every game as, as clear underdogs, and they've performed so well. And this is the last outing for them. They're just going to do the basics well. Unfortunately, there's the first mistake of the big hit, and that's what they have to do. Whoa. Okay. Look at that celebration. Do they think they get points for that? Welsh handling error? Robbie, yeah. what are you expecting here tonight? Look, I think the rain is going to help out Wales at this point in time. It's going to slow the game down a little bit. I think Papua New Guinea have just gone from strength to strength. I thought that Tonga used to get out of jail free card against them a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think really Papua New Guinea have really made a real strong statement that during this World Cup that they actually are a power in the world of rugby league. Well, they have the early possession. Lachlan Lamb shifting it out to this left-hand side, Justin Olam. Yeah, just one of the star players in there, the Melbourne Storm centre tonight, Justin Olam. Back towards Lamb, who will be playing in Super League next year, of course, with the Lee Leopards. Emmanuel Wayne drives it in. And Edwin Apapi, another of the Lee players, who's been a real eye-catcher this year, the Championship Player of the Year, Apapi. He's got real zip out of dummy half, but he's... Got a ball back here as well from the offload from Albert. The Welsh defence is under pressure right from the start. A dummy half goes Alec. Slow play the ball. Ships it out to Laban. Going wider right. Johnston helps it on his way. And then there's the handling error from the PNG side this time. And the Welsh will get the ball back. Yeah, good, good defending by Wales. They numbered up very well. It's a very good tackle. He's a very dangerous player. You've got to watch this Alex Johnson, South Sydney, class player. And I think that's one of the things that Wales needs to do, needs to hurry Papua New Guinea. Try and encourage him to play an offload game, and actually, in these conditions, that'll play straight into their hands. So Wales with a chance to bring it out. Matty Fossard at dummy half. John Keir. The mastermind of uh, so many upsets down the year. Years. 
Williams out of Donny Half with his dash. He's the one of um, only two players, the two wingers, Williams and Evans, who played in Super League last year in this Welsh side. A lot of part-timers with a championship and League One and Country Rugby League over in Australia. So this Welsh side is um, is just a band of brothers, really. And they've been playing that. That was High and Lloyd, was it? No, it wasn't. Referee says play on, and Fossard comes out to Ralph, Ralph with a kick, up and high, and Nutlick underneath it, and he's taken a slip. That's a good set by Wales, you know, they made an error on the first set, now this is all about the conditions and where you play the game. You know, force the errors in the opposition 20, put pressure on them. Well, the sense it's going to be a, a night of handling errors, don't you? Because it is very, very wet. The rain began to pour down about 40 minutes ago. So the New Guineans just happy to keep possession here. Bringing it clear. Get through the set. Find themselves a good platform to get the kick downfield, maybe. That's good offloading, though. Nixon put on this left-hand side. Here's Olam. Olam trying to shake off defenders and gets Nutlick away. Nutlick looking for support inside. The ball's gone to ground. It's a slip and a slide. How many knock-ons there? At least a couple. Wales get ahead and feed at the scrum. Yeah, I'm not sure that of the tactics by Papua New Guinea there. The conditions aren't conducive to moving the ball. Yes, they did create space, but you've got to stay on the island. You've got to get your nose down and not go for the miracle offload. That's playing directly into Wales's hands. The more the ball can go to ground, the more it slows down. Wales will have, Wales will have a field there. Yeah, I think Lam had to put a foot to that ball there. It's very difficult conditions. If he put a foot to it, I think the fullback would have been beaten. But you just got to be Wales have got to be aware of Wellington Albert. Every time he's carried the ball in, he's, he's had an offload. He's a big fella, isn't he? He is up and square. the Broncos these days, but he's been uh, up in the Super League with. Leeds, not that long ago. England looking on, knowing that they'll be playing against one of these two opponents. There's no way the Cook Islands can qualify after that absolute trampling by Tonga yesterday. So it will be either or of these two. And maybe an advantage England as well before that match even starts, because there's another set of six here, because whoever wins tonight has only got five days, four days to recover before they face it. It's a big advantage for England. I think it's one of the reasons why Papua New Guinea rattled in the changes that they did. Benyon with a charge. Fossard waits at dummy half again. Six played. Wales have to score points here tonight. Ollie Olds goes left. This is Aikens. He's got a big bit of whiz bang and flash about him, but not on that occasion. It's back with Olds again towards the middle. Antrobus with a driving effort. He's run hard, isn't he? All tournament, Antrobus. Fossard again. Back with Olds. Olds now. Little step again by Ralph. Josh Ralph. Well, they're in territory, but they've run out of tackles. There's only one to go here for Wales on the sixth. It's going to be Olds to try and make something with that kick to the end goal, but he's just overcooked it. And Papua New Guinea get it with a seven tackle restart on the 20. That would be very frustrating for uh, John Key and the Welsh players, purely because you know, getting a good field position, a deft little kick is needed, difficult conditions, but just put too much on it. So the first carry is from Roderick Ty. Only made his debut against Tonga in the first game of this World Cup, but this is now his third appearance. He scored two in two, so he's enjoying himself at Rugby League World Cup 2021, despite the fact that it's 2022. Should have been last year, of course, but for the dreaded COVID. In fact, another set of six for Papua New Guinea. That's the hooter in the background, just signalling that to the crowd as the referee waves his arm. Yeah, it's a big mistake. They're halfway, you know, reset. Labour drops it back in for Reese Martin, who's testing that Welsh defence. Ipape wants a quick one. Back on the inside for Albert. Albert posts it left. Lamb now throws it wide to Olam. Olam with a step back on the inside, bouncing off defenders. What a bullet offload that was, and just keeping it alive. The Welsh had to do well to recover there. They're under pressure on their own line. Ipape again. Ipape sees a gap, goes for it. Just about a foot short of where he wants to be. Albert now. Here's Labour. Labour. He's going to go on the outside and he's going to score. 
grabbed out by Antrobos, no more than that, and Leibert skids through, and Papua New Guinea get the start they want with that early try. And that's the threat that Papua New Guinea's halves offer you. They, they've set up really good uh, systems outside them. There were a number of different waves that were on with big runners about to find those lines, but when you've got a player like Leibert, and we've seen it on a number of occasions throughout this tournament, he does have the ability to put the foot down and take the line on. What an offload that is. You know, another offload, take a bit of time to organise defence, and just a, a mismatch. You know, he just, the outside man, I think, always gets up too early, it creates the gap on the side of uh, Antrobus, and a good halfback always takes that, just a natural gap opened up. And that's one of the benefits of having a player like Reece Martin outside you. You know the defenders are going to have to deal with him. You switch off for one second, you get upstream, Labour gets in behind. Yeah, I think Oliver O's uh, made the call for Labour, just went up early, gap was there. <laughs> you're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You don't get off the line, he's going to run over top of you. You get off the line too much, and you open the door. There's a lot of rocks and hard places in that Papua New Guinea side oh, as well, isn't there? Boulders. They do hit. Here's Martin. Steps back. A prodigious goal. Yeah. Slides it through. And Papua New Guinea up and running six points to nil. If you've got a calculator by the side of your armchair, Wales now need 28 points and not concede again. He's a nice-looking player, isn't he, Kyle Lay? But he did have a spell at the Cowboys, but he's playing in uh, in Townsville at the moment for the Blackhawks, not the Cowboys. He's a, he's a youth worker back home. Bands here. Keeping us entertained. Well, the rugby league on the field has been keeping us entertained in these, uh, these opening few minutes as well. Too big. Too big. Well, there's the restart that... Too big. Too big. Yep, it's, uh, it's uh, all the way full. That's good play as well. With clever, clever, yeah, that, wasn't it? He just put his foot behind the dead ball line, and then just it's a it's a penalty. If the ball goes out on the full. It's a penalty from yep. the kick off, and uh, if a player puts his foot behind the ball, and there you see Alex Johnson doing just yeah. that. In fact, I think it was out anyway. It was out yeah, anyway. Yeah. anyway. Oh, oh. So penalty again for Papua New Guinea. No fine touch. The tap restart has Reese Martin with that initial carry. Papi at dummy half. Now Wellington Albert. And Albert tearing a bit of a hole in that Welsh defence, but they recover. Antrobus gets his hands on him and pulls him down. The rain is teeming down at the moment. Alec pushing in. Another set of six. And that far from the line. That spells danger. The danger siren from the Welsh defence because Papua New Guinea. I've just got a moment to camp there with plenty of tackles in the bag. Back it comes for Laban. Driven in hard by Wayne, Emmanuel Wayne. Three Welsh defences that are dancing around him. This is Ipapi. Ipapi, Lamb, Lamb, short pass. Nixon put the second rower right to the ground. Welsh defenders scrambling around at the moment. Ipape will try a bit of more magic here. Throwing it out. Back to Alec again. Alec just robust and challenging, but Wales hanging on. Last tackle. Last tackle. Can Wales survive here? Ipape goes left. The reach for the line. And Nixon Pott. Nixon Pott is there to score. It's heartbreak for Wales this early. But Papua New Guinea are looking to entertain here ahead of that big match against England. Yeah, good lead-up play by Papua New Guinea. They're, they're being very patient. Quite interesting there. They're choosing to hit the lead runner every single time, and that'll pay dividends when they come to the back end of the half and the defences keep to stay in. But they're on. That's just a one-on-one -on -one mess on the line. But I tell you what, this man, Dixon Putt, he's had a wow of a, of a, of a tournament. Powerful squat player. He's low to the ground. Very powerful. Unless you get in front of him, it's just a mismatch. Yeah, a mismatch. I think he's on the half back there. Just runs over the top of him. But unfortunately for Wales, under pressure, but they're getting quick play the balls in power PNG. Are, you know, reset on the halfway line, reset under the force. They just can't do it. Too big, too strong on that occasion. But a great, a great flat ball. You know, you can't have time to come off your line. He just powers over the top of him. 
Give his puppy some something. He recognised that the halfback was looking in. He realised that he had putt on his left hand side. He knows how dynamic he is next to the try line, and it was just a nice flat little touch of a pass. Too big, too strong. So Reese Martin settling himself again here. He's kicked in these kind of conditions many, many times in his Leeds Rhinos career. This won't be a problem. A rock back, a focus on the ball, and a sweet sweep of the foot makes it goal at number two. And Papua New Guinea lead by 12 points to nil. And they're almost scoring at a point a minute in these early stages. Jonathan, how do Wales lift themselves here now? Well, discipline is one thing. Unfortunately, they've got to get up and uh, be a bit more aggressive in the tackle because what's happening is the Fingia players, whenever they hit the tackle, post-tackle, they are getting yards and yards. And it's so difficult when they're on the back foot and there's a quick play of the ball. Yeah, they need to figure out of dominating the tackle. At the moment, they're lying on top of the player, the player's on his front, and that's giving the back-to-back -back set. But they need to somehow turn him onto his back and let the referee say dominant tackle. That's the way to slow him down. Well, Papua New Guinea and Rugby League, it's, uh, it, they are fanatics in Papua New Guinea, aren't they? They absolutely love the sport. It is, um, you know, commonly quoted the fact that it is the national sport, Rugby League, in Papua New Guinea. But there is an argument to say that this is probably one of the best, if not the best, squads they've, they've ever assembled. They started with the PNG Hunters, didn't they, who got in the Queensland Cup a few years ago, and you can see the development in Papua New Guinea Rugby League since then. Oh, certainly. This is the by far the best Papua New Guinea team I have ever seen. They're so more well-balanced and more disciplined as well. There's no, many, many different uh, levels to their Papua New Guinea game now. I think we'll only go to strength to strength. Labour with a kick, they have to put it downfield, Williams underneath it, all oh, the bounce, straight out of play, straight out of play. The difference with this PNG side is that they, they travel well, you know, the previous occasion, as you said, they play in 35 degrees, you know, humidity is ridiculous, and then when they come abroad, they just, they, they didn't turn up. Now this side, with all, you know, the experience of the players are currently having, you know, they go and travel well. Did you play in a defeat? Were you in a Great Britain side that got beaten in Papua New Guinea? I, I did. Yes, I thought you Thanks, did. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome. <laughs> but the most recent Great Britain team well, also got beaten in Papua New Guinea as well. Does that make you feel better, Jiffy? Yeah, you know. Beat them 68 0 in Swansea, mind, but this is good revenge. <laughs> good, good revenge. Okay. No need to be smooth. But it is. No it was that weather smooth. again. <laughs> to, to go there, it's just an experience. Papua New Guinea. It is absolute madness. You know, the support that this national side has is ridiculous. Sit for the most in intimidating oh. place I think I've ever played. Oh, it's like the Beatles, right? It's another miscommunication amongst the Welsh. Trubos puts it down, so head and feet at the scrum here for Papua New Guinea. You've got to cut the mistakes out as well. You know, they've got a little bit 12 points behind early in the game. Conditions will dictate the way you play. You, you can't be throwing loose passes. He thinks it's 35 degrees. There you go, normal wear. Normal wear for Doncaster on a wet Monday night, I tell you. Halloween. Let's not be disrespectful to their national dress. No, I'm, there, John. I'm not. It's terrific. It's a fact. It is Halloween. 64% possession for PNG so far. Reflected in a scoreline, 12 points to nil. They're going to have to figure how they deal with Justin six, Nolan. Four, He's making too many yards. Another, another set of six. Emmanuel Wayne drives it in. Still playing with the PNG Hunters. That development side that has done so much. Wellington Albert now. As it's moved to Olam. Justin Olam. Yeah, penalty. Off the ball. Off the ball, late hit. Contact. Yeah, just you normally see that type of contact on the smallest man on the field, not the biggest man on the field. He wasn't really in the Don't poke the bear. Don't poke the bear. He didn't put a shot really on him, just pushed him over. You're going to give a penalty away, make sure you do. Yeah, yeah, make sure exactly you do put a shot on him. Exactly my thoughts. 
Emmanuel Wayne drives it in. Edwin Ipape, four to his left, but more to his right. And that's the way he's going to go now. Spins it out to Leibut. They're making numbers on that right-hand side or attempting to. Nene McDonald is going to take some grappling and holding as he pushes. Look how many Welsh players are there. He's trying to hold him up, and they do hold him up. The ball comes out. Alex Johnson says thank you. What's the referee given here? Is it he said he was held up? No, he's yeah, given a penalty. Penalty, penalty to Bambi again. He just ball. said you've got to clean up in the run. So a, another set, basically. Six more tackles. And Wellington Albert will lead the charge. There'll be some sore bodies amongst those Wales players from this World Cup already. And they're going to get sorer as the night goes on. Here comes Lamb. He'll be happy to tackle him. He's one of the smaller fellas. It's been a very physical group, hasn't it, for Wales? Tom the Cook, I don't know. goes short with a pass. Great, great pass, hasn't he, Pape? Now it comes again. Spins it out towards Labour. Labour inside for Johnston. Johnson's lost the ball. And they're overplaying it a little bit. Tom New Guinea just overplaying it, thinking that they want to score on every, uh, on every play. Yeah, their play was telegraph. They were sitting up for that. They, no matter what, they were going to put that on. In reality, they should have been just taking one in, sitting up for that last play and trying to get it back to back set. This is the group that's given us some real, real moments, hasn't it? The Welsh performance in this group. That heartbreaking defeat against the Cook Isles. The fact that they touched, pushed Tonga so far. The two tries they conceded just before half-time did for them that day. And here they are in the final group. I know when the group, uh, when they when they had the draw, Buckingham Palace, all those years ago now. And they, they came out with this group. John Keir immediately said, the group of death. Because it's going to be tough. And it has been tough. But they've been up for the fight. It's seen the best games as well. Yeah, I think so. It's an exciting group. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Papua New Guinea, Tonga. I mean, Papua New Guinea, very unfortunate not to be going through as group yeah. leaders, aren't they, yeah. if they win here tonight? Yeah. Because... They maybe could and should have won against Tonga in their opening match. Here's Walker, Anthony Walker, bowling it forward. Wales have got a bit of a bit of foot, foothold inside their opponent's half, but they've reached the end of the count again. And Olds with a kick too far. The catch on the fall means that again it's a tap back on the 20 and a seven tackle restart here for Papua New Guinea. You, you just can't do that. It's a poor kick. You know, the conditions are dreadful. They put on the ground into the corner. Really, really put some hang time on it. Put some pressure on the catcher. Too easy. And look where they are already. You know, a couple of a couple of targets in the halfway line. The part-timers, they've been battered by Tonga. They've been battered by Cook Islands physically. How difficult is it to lift it again for a third game against the team who are going to bat you all over again? Searching down the blind side with Ipape. Welsh defence recovers. Bailey Antrobus amongst those to get the telling touch in. Leibut. Now it's with Lamb. Just trying to burst through the middle again here. Still got tackles in the back. Two to go here for PNG. Lachlan Lamb looking to weave a bit of magic again. Johnston, he's a threat. 30 tries in the NRL last year. That's how much of a threat he is. It's picked up by Nutlick. It's Lamb who's going to kick it. It's a greasy ball that hangs high in the air. There's a scramble. And there's a knock-on. That's a difference. You know, on a kick on the last tackle. Just hangs it up there. Good communication. They nearly get it. And you see that Lee Leopard's connection there. Yeah. Lamb kicking it across to Nene McDonald. We saw this the other night. We've got the knockback. Try scored off the back of it. We'll expect to see that again this time. They'll be hoping to rock the Super League next year with those two. Nene McDonald, Lachlan Lamb. Edwin Ipape as well. Looking forward to see them in the top flight next year. I think Ipape's been impressive, hasn't he? Yeah. Good distribution. He's quick. Been brilliant all year. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant yeah. all year. Yeah. Full start. He's going to have a little dabble again at Dummy Hart. Josh Ralph just ran past him. So this is Robbery Lloyd. Searching down the middle. Setting a platform here for them to work off. Two tackles to go. Fossard again. It's with Burke, who bounces in. He's driving it well. 
He's going to be held up. Can't get the offload away. Arms pinned. So has to get up and play. And now it comes to Ralph. Ralph on the inside. They're trying something a little adventurous here. Walker helps it on its way. It's into the foot of all who slides that kick. Really good kick into the indoor area. Yeah, better, better kick to finish this set. Another reset. As the heavens open once again. Wow. Fortunate as well, you know, a little bit off the cuff. But actually, as you were saying before, Jiffy, putting the ball on the ground is going to ask a lot more questions. It's a frightening thing. You've played in these conditions before. Yeah. You know you know what can happen in that backfield. The ball never goes where you want it to go. Well, the dropper is not exactly... I think that was a bit of a, a, a scrubbed kick there. So Wales get possession in better position than they might have been. Elliot Keir winning his 30th cap, by the way. He draws level with our studio guest Ian Watson and Jordan James tonight in terms of number of caps won for Wales. Bailey Antrobus drives it in. Rhys Williams winning his 33rd tonight. He extends his record. Walker looking to pull it back. There's the kick towards the corner. Here's Kyle Evans on the chase. And it bounced out again off of Papua New Guinea. No, came last off Welsh. Hands. That's unlucky. So it'll be a tap back on the 20. Yeah, that's very unlucky. Good early kick because of a narrow defensive yeah. line. Nearly caught. I think he had a chance, didn't he? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Evans was flying there. If that ball was a little bit longer, because he still had a good 5, 10 metres to work to that sideline. Bolts had just put that ball just a little bit longer. I think we would have seen Wales' first try. Oh, these are fantastic conditions for rugby league, aren't they? <laughs> Brilliant conditions. Pouring down. You can hear it hammering on the roof now. That's how hard the rain is. Oh, on. Good well, they're serving up some great He's entertainment away. here because this is fantastic, absolutely fantastic from Jimmy Nutlick. The winger saw a gap for a lot go. And Jimmy Nutlick, only his second international appearance, scores his first Papua New Guinean try. And he sparked a party in Matt Hagen and Paul Walsby. Papua New Guinea, 16-0 up. And this is what happens when you play that patient game when you go through the middle of the team you start to tire out the players in the middle of the park and a number of those welsh players are starting to get tired acting half runs arcing in behind the ruck getting just identifying those tired players and a player like this too quick how fast is he fast enough yeah that was just once he brought up the first line there was no catching him between two, two tight forwards, quick top, and he's away. There's no one catching him. He was he was dancing through the raindrops there, wasn't he? Terrific stuff. I think he enjoyed that moment. Jimmy Nutley, the man of the name. He could be a threat against England on Saturday. The threat you have as a Welshman, you've got to... Do you squeeze your line in and offer them the, the outside? Yeah, that was just poor defence, to be honest. You know, the two pro forwards, the pace caught them out a little bit. They were grasping at thin air. And then once he broke the first line, unfortunately, no chance of standing full back. And uh, John's identified, John Kerr's identified that, Welsh head coach. Made his swaps. Fresh legs are on there now. Rhys Martin with this conversion attempt and it's his third success of the night 18 points to nil his 10th success of the tournament and Jimmy Nutley still glowing after this moment good speed that's a fantastic try it's an absolutely fantastic try we've, uh, we've seen this tournament turn up some stars some expected some unexpected I don't think too many would have known Jimmy Nutley's name outside the western suburbs Magpies but we all know his name now. And that's one of the jobs of the outside back, those early carries. They're told, they're taught to run at the A defenders. Get him behind the ruck, because if anyone's going to be lazy, it's going to be there. So the Welsh, their dreams are sudden at the moment. The hearts are breaking, but can they show the character to at least get back into this game? They haven't won a World Cup match. For such a long time. Referees warned them, you know, gotta be cleaner in the rack. Unfortunately, they're not listening and they get an easy yardage. 22 years back to 2000. I think Jonathan Davis was almost still playing. No. Where the Welsh last won a game on this stage. 
Reese Martin. Just solidly in. Pape. A dummy half. Waiting patiently. To deliver back towards the middle again. And Alec. And taken on again. Carried in. Simbikon, who's on the field from the interchange bench. Here's Lachlan Lamb, who's uh, having a little wander there to see what he might discover. It's Nene MacDonald, who's left the ball behind and dropped on gratefully by Ollie Ho Olds. Yeah, look, looking for the inside support runner. You're not always looking for the, for the offload, even in these conditions. Yeah, Papua New Guinea are guilty of anything tonight, and that's just overplaying in a couple of instances. The score tries if they just be a little more patient. That's right, the score have been direct, haven't they? Elliot Keir bounces back to his feet. Wales take the charge on again. By the way, if you are still working on your calculator, it's now 40 points that Wales have to score. It was it was unlikely before we started. It's it's getting less and less likely as the night goes on. Kick downfield from Fossard. Just safely done by Alex Johnston. Immediately a threat when he picks it up. The Welsh are aware of that, so into his rib cage as quick as they can. Led by Will Evans. Kyle Evans also working hard on that side. It's a quick pickup for Lachlan Lamb. Now it's Olam, Justin Olam. Connor and Bailey. They are struggling to keep up with the play the balls wheels are. It's so quick. Always on the front foot. Simbican from the Redcliffe Dolphins. Jeremiah Simbican wants to get up and play it. Ipape will take it on. Dan Russell, who's also on for the interchange bench. And it's a penalty. Ball steal. So Papua New Guinea, I'm sure, will select to go for another set here. Rather it's all, than kick for goal. Yeah, it's all too obvious at the moment. They're just struggling with the speed of Papua New Guinea's play the balls. What happens then? You're just struggling. You're just trying to hold on. That's when you start putting your hands in the ruck. Simica. Up towards the 10. Ipape. Looking to deliver. Back on the inside for Russell and Lamb. And Lamb goes further left to Putt. And this time there's no way through for Nixon Putt. And Papi goes back towards Russell. And he's going to get there. Ball on the whitewash. That's good enough. Fourth try for Papi New Guinea. 22 points to nil. They lead now. They are putting on a show here, Papi New Guinea. They are putting on a real show. They're, they're sending out a message to the rest of this tournament. We were talking about England, Australia, New Zealand, and Tonga and Samoa before the tournament began. Do we have to put Papua New Guinea in that reckoning now? Oh, it'll, be a, it'll be a tougher game than they've had so far. England, there's the penalty once again. Field position, I think it's on Russell. So he comes up. You know, it's a good line and it just stretches over. Simple try, not enough line speed there, but... They're out on their feet at the moment, whereas the, sp the, the speed of the play of the balls, they just cannot cope. And they had great shape to play just before that. Papua New Guinea was spreading out to the left. The Welsh defence all come across to their right, which left a one-on-one -on -one opportunity and thin numbers in the middle of the park. And that's where Russell capitalised and was able to just get that momentum and got long arms. We you know what it was like, Rob, you know, when, when the forwards are so dominant, you know, the half backs just in an armchair right. They're picking the holes, they're picking the you know the least numbers on the defensive side. So it's just it's a walk in a park, you know, for the of quality of Lamb and Labert. Reese Martin just settling again. He's looked pretty good with the boots so far tonight, hasn't he? Despite the slippery conditions, and over it goes again. 24 points to nil for Papua New Guinea. 30 minutes played. I tell you what, this World Cup, we've seen some one-sided scorelines in the early stages. But I think we're in for an absolute barnstorming quarterfinals. Yeah, I think you're going to get that in every, you know, in every sport, you know, in the qualifying rounds. The better sides against the, you know, not, not so talented sides. But, you know, no, I think the quarterfinals, it gets a little bit serious. And I think the semi-finals, you know, I think they're going to be classic games. So Fossard gets the kick away. We are enjoying the show that Papua New Guinea are putting on here tonight. Playing with a touch of class. Ipapi. 
from that initial drive will pick up and look left again. They've got a bit of depth in this Papua New Guinean squad as well. Some star players sprinkled in amongst some real endeavour. Simbikan picks up and goes left. Here's Nixon Putz with a good offload. Taken on again by Alec. They just keep moving, they keep flowing. It's with labour and good hands, but they're not good hands. The ball's gone to ground, and Wales will get a bit of relief here with the ball back again. Yeah, a little bit of overplay there by Papua New Guinea, but I've got to say, I'm absolutely loving what the Papua New Guinea and Hals are doing at the moment. The ball doesn't go to hand, but the opportunities are there. Lachlan Lamb is just moving everyone around, all of their big forwards the around the park the like a, a master chess player. And Labour is just watching him, talking to him all the time, oh, just setting up those next plays. Lachlan Lamb had everything set up on this left-hand okay. side. Labour had everything set the on the right-hand side. Doing a great job, generally being right. generals in the middle of the park. Thanks. Here's Will Evans, who's on his way to witness next year. Just had a year at Whitehaven. Young player of the year there, but he's, um, he's on his move to John Kerr's witness. Joining his, uh, his national coach at domestic level. Kyle Evans, who knows where he will be. Surely he'll be somewhere with what he's shown in this World Cup. Rhys Evans with the offload. Wales trying to just pick up yards here if they can. Don't forget the women's tournament kicks off tomorrow as well. In a couple of days' time, the wheelchair tournament kicks off too. The World Cup is getting really serious now. Men's quarterfinals, women's wheelchair. The festival is rolling on. Here is Antrobus. 20 metres out and pushed back an extra five. Elliot Keir at dummy half. Inside for Ollie Olds. Olds now to Ralph. Ralph back again. Aikens gets it away. This is good. Will Evans on this right hand side. Will Evans too tight to the touchline to try and pass to Kyle. Kyle Evans now will pick it up. The best position the Welsh have had for a long, long time, but they're on the last. Josh Ralph puts it high, too high. Easy take for the Papua New Guineans. And because it's a, a tap restart, they can get on with it as quickly as they can. And they are suddenly attacking from a defensive position. Nene McDonald eventually tackled, but on the halfway line, and they've got another six tackles to go. Yeah, that's smart play for Nene McDonald. He went back, secured the ball in goal, and then run straight up and got the quick uh, penalty out. Uh, Quick tap. And that's everything that they want. That great set by Wales, and they're now on the back foot once again. Again, it's poor execution on the kick. That's all it is. It gives them opportunity on the front foot, and here they are once again. There's Ty put down the winger from the right hand side, and then smash down the middle. Papua New Guinea take it. Oh, Lachlan Lamb. Good, good carry into the line. Nixon puts. And it's gone away. And, Knock and, off. and again, you know, they're just forcing the pass now. They, you know, they are. You know, they got, they got a 24-point cushion. So you can afford to do that. But just pushing the pass. There's a. You should hit the ground here. He tries to get a miracle pass away in traffic. Scrum for Wales. I mean, this is something that they've got to be considering. Being that, yes, more, 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 more than likely that they're going to be facing England. You can't do that against England. England will capitalise. You, you don't get many option, opportunities against those bigger teams. Papua New Guinea are going to have to come up with better results than that. I think, I think against England, though, they, they'll have to try and get some offloads in because I think they might be dominated physically up front by England forward. So they will have to try and get the offloads in, but hopefully for them, maybe it'll be better conditions on Saturday. In Wigan, be much worse. In Wigan, don't count on it. Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Here's Elliot Keir. Isn't there a storm coming? Good offload by Keir. Uh, Antrobos. Antrobos making a break. A dash. A dash from Antrobos has taken Wales inside the Papua New Guinea half. He's been impressive this time. Back they come again. Robbery Lloyd captured by three Papua New Guinean defenders. Matty Fossard slapping his hands, wants to get on with this. Another set of six for the Welsh. They've got a chance to build some pressure on their opponent's line. Antrobus again with a carry. Short penalty. High. Well, it's another set of six. They're going to take a tap and run it, or at the very least kick to touch. They're not going to kick for goal here. Kenneth Sutton, there's no messing about. He's very consistent. That's all he wants, isn't it? Any infringement in the, in the attack area, it's a... Another set. Well, 
here we go. Here we go. Can Wales post something here? Fleming with the initial drive. He's put down. The Featherstone drop forward. Falsard picks up, comes to this right-hand side again. Connor Davis is on the field. He's involved there, but Wales can't find the key to the door on that occasion. Slams shot in their face. Falsard. Here's Ralph. Ralph now across the line. A straightforward effort from Fleming again. All guts and determination. But met by that irresistible force of the Papua New Guinean defence. It's left. It's high. Is it? On holds. Great, de great defence. Good line speed. Falsard again. Work back on the inside. Connor Davis. Well, they're on the last again here. They're on the last. Falsard. Flicks it back to Ralph. Ralph, little kick into the end goal there. It's spilled. It's offside. It's a penalty of the least here. Penalty of the least here for Wells. It is. So another chance to attack this line. That's their go-to play tonight. They're putting the ball on the ground with grubber kicks. Both Olds and Ralph are being, being, are being jumped out of by That's their Papua New Guinean defence. The They're giving no, getting no time on the ball, but when you jump out on a player like that, if they can just dribble the ball in behind, you're going to have space in behind there like you've seen the last couple of times. Here they go again. Oh, not with a pass like that. You can start with something a little sharper than that, but they've kept possession. That's the main thing at this stage. Uh, no, they've not. They've lost. Oh, it's another, no, it's penalty. another penalty. It's another penalty. Well, they're racking up. How many How many tackles have they had on this Papua New Guinean line? And here come a few more. Driven in by Chester Butler. Butler trying to force his way over. Just held up short. Fossard now comes out next. It's with Ralph. They've got a bit of room on this right-hand side. Oh, my word. My word. Well, they saw daylight and suddenly went all dark again. Because Jimmy Notley was there with that big shoulder. Yeah, too early in the target going to go wide. You've got to come in, uh, come in from the touchline. Once he's caught there, he has absolutely no chance. That's a lonely place to be, I can tell you that. Carl Evans there. You're just an old coming across. Nutley. He's got no room. There's no option for him. He can't even chuck it back over the top with a pass. Yeah, you're right, Jeffy. You've got to earn the right to go wide. That means holding the defence. Kyle Evans would have seen all that in slow motion, wouldn't he? Yeah. As the, the big frame of Jimmy Nutley came flying at him with his shoulder. He is an athlete. He is a specimen, this Kyle Evans. Yeah, he is. He's good. But, you know, good luck with that. Yeah. Played in this, uh, in this town, as we said before, the Doncaster Rugby Union, before his switch. Francis Cummings, the assistant coach at uh, Wakefield last year, had done a bit of coaching at Doncaster Rugby Union, recommended him, Wakefield signed him, he did a job, he's been doing a job for Wales in this World Cup as well. Papua New Guinea, last 30 seconds of this half, should finish the session with ball in hand, unless, of course, it's kicked over the top by Ipape. Williams carefully picks it up. It's uh, with Caleb Aikens, who might have said thank you very much to uh, Reese Williams for that pass. Greasy ball and big thunderous monsters coming at him. But, uh, he kept a hold. So Wales, in the last embers of this first period. Well, our clock says time up, but we've not heard the hooter yet. Still free. Still playing, still playing. <laughs> now we hear the hooter. That will be that. Well, if there were any doubts before, if there was a glimmer of the hope for the Welsh before the night began, that's gone. But we can sit back and enjoy this very, very good Papua New Guinean team doing what they do best, running hard, scoring tries. And we pose the question, what are they like on a wet Monday night in Doncaster? Turns out not too bad. Yeah, they run hard. Public Indian Force will always run hard. And, and if they win that just contact tackle area, the half-backs will have a good afternoon, a good, a good evening. And that's what's happened so far. They've been very, very clinical with good control rugby league. So Papua New Guinea, 24 points to nil. I think we're going to hear from their skipper, Rhys Martin, right now, who's uh, down there with Damien Johnson.
Reese very impressive in the first half. Did PNG bring their A game? Um, yeah, we, we weren't coming here to, to turn up aggressively and play our style of footy, but just got to fix up a few uh, errors there so we're building a bit more pressure. But um, yeah, we're playing some good footy. Is it all about discipline now, building the combinations with one eye on the quarterfinal? Yeah, definitely, mate. We just need to stick to our game plan. Uh, I've been speaking it all week that these guys will turn up no matter what, and um, we just got to hold the ball and build pressure. Thanks, Reese. Elliot Keir is here, the, uh, the Welsh captain. Elliot, a, a mountain to climb. They've been pretty good, PNG, today. Uh, yeah, we just kind of need to look after the ball a bit better, I think. The conditions, we need to just play the conditions a bit better. Kicking game a bit off as well. Yeah, we're a, a few like mishaps there. Something that we need to fix up. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Time for him to get into a dry dressing room. It is absolutely throwing it down here in Doncaster and I am very, very relieved that it's not blowing it in this way to us. Um, Ian, fair to say, a tough first half for that Wales. Is this looking a little bit like a game too far for them? Yeah, I, I think Wales have been their own worst enemy, to be fair. Um, Elliot's just touched on it there about the kicking game and it's something that me and John were speaking about. They were just letting pressure off and when it's so wet like this, you can't be giving field position up so easily. Every time they've gave up field position, Papua New Guinea's come down the other end and executed which is what Wales have failed to do with their kicking game. It was a powerful start from Papua New Guinea, wasn't it? And we spoke about some characters before the game. Uh, maybe about you what... You what you were talking about, John. Well, yes, yeah, sometimes <laughs> when you do analysis before the game, the players let you down. Well, the Papua New Guinea players didn't let us down here because they were all over their fingerprints, were all over the start from Papua New Guinea. And it started with the try from Lair, but what, what happened? Papua New Guinea just looked powerful, got into some good shape. Justin Olam got his hands on the ball, which we knew he was a threat when he did. But Melbourne Storm know how much of an asset he is. And just his evasive skill and his ability to evade tackles was evident. And it's the Labour try and the Reese Martin line, which really holds up the defence. We see it here. Labour has the ball. Reese Martin just fades here. That just holds that defender out, it creates space. Labour, once he sees that defender hold out on Reese Martin, it was an ex exceptional piece of execution. And it was a Pape's ball from dummy half. So Reese Martin, a Pape, and Justin Olam all involved in the first try. The second try was a little bit more direct, wasn't it? Um, just pure, brutal power from um, Nixon Putt. And, and, and at this stage here, what, what's a Pape looking for? He's just looking for a little mismatch. It's the halfback opposite Nixon Putt. And he, he's smart enough just to feed the big man onto small man. And that was the powerful start in Watson, wasn't it? Yeah, they've just had too many um, situations where they've ended up with one-on-ones with big men against small men. And Well, he's come off the back of, like I say, Wales not looking after their possession and finishing their sets well. Then Papua New Guinea have just rolled them. The power's just been too much for Wales. Yeah, it's, it's massive though, isn't it? We talk about that mismatching shape, we talk about the mismatching players. That's the biggest contest that Wales have got. There's not a chance that they can match in the middle anything that Papua New Guinea have got. And they've got to be a lot smarter when it comes to it. They've got to conserve that energy in defence. They're putting a lot of men into that tackle to try and stop them. They've got to think about that. Hit a bit lower and try and conserve it a little bit because Papua New Guinea are just going to keep going down that middle and chugging that ball and getting them off the, you know, turning them hips and getting them off the inside shoulder. Yeah, I just think that Wales had the part to play in that though. It wasn't just all Papua New Guinea in power that dominated that half. There was a period, and I asked Ian Watson to pick out some clips from a coaching perspective of things that maybe Wales didn't quite get right. And here's a selection of the British Ian would like to talk over. Yeah, and, and again, it's in the kicking game, the last one, especially like in, it's so wet out here. It's absolutely throwing it down. You can't give up field position and keep letting the pressure off and inviting the other team down to your end because eventually they're going to score points. And we spoke about the importance of kicking game in these conditions. And in stark contrast to Wales, I thought Papua New Guinea got it, got it right. Wales just had a lot of opportunities to, to, to finish the sets well and just couldn't quite come up with the right players. Yeah, it's the execution. It's come down to it. It's the execution. It's You, you look there, and again, that's a seven-tackle set, that, and then on the back of that, they get another six again, and then they score on the back of it. It's, it's Wales' own fault at the moment. Yeah, their errors led to tries, and the mistake in the kicks led to tries for Papua New Guinea. In, in defence, though, there are times Wales have got it right, haven't you? And you can see what happens when they do. Yeah, when, when they've looked after the rook and then Papua New Guinea have gone to the edge, that's probably something that Papua New Guinea are going to have to learn throughout the tournament here, is if they're going to beat a team like England, they're going to have to be patient, because when they've gone to the edge, Elliot Keir and them are, people have defended really, really 
really well. You, you, you look on the screen now. The first there, time though they built any yeah, pressure, the, wasn't it? The first time they executed. Yeah, and then they nearly got it right. They nearly scored yeah, off that. But again, they didn't score. And Papua New Guinea go down the other end and score again. Yeah. That was the story, wasn't it? So, so Wales create an opportunity, execute a kick, finally get in a good position. And well, off the back of it, they just couldn't defend. And we saw Nutlick, Jimmy Nutlick go the length of the field, which was a crushing blow for Wales, who just managed to get some possession, just managed to control it. And then to go and concede the length of the field try for Nutlick was really, when you say it's a step too, too far, it was Ant Walker really slow out of the run. And Nutlick just exposes that, that lack of energy and the, maybe the lack of speed to get into into position, but not like sure. Great pace, Danica. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you look at that Wales. They, they've taken. It seems that they've taken a while to get into the game yet. Not fixing up right. You know, they look like they're kind of dragging, getting back in defence. But at the same time, we've got to look at the positives. Is that Wales at one point had 18. Um, you know tackles on the on the bounce to keep going forward yeah and, and once once png had position they just looked too powerful you see this russell spots the, the gaps too wide in front of him and that just when the defender closes the space he just drops to his outside shoulder but it was all about png power for me when they wanted to blitz through wales they have my question is will they be able to do the same against england this is the thing isn't it you know wales have not stepping up but png are playing you know, they're playing a really good game here. They're, they're on the front foot, of course, but are they playing well enough to come up against England in five days' time? It's a really short turnaround. I think they've got quite a few bits to fix up. There's a, a few simple errors there that they just need to kind of clean up, I think. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things of it, you look at the quality of like, the spine of the team in Wales and in Papua New Guinea. You look at the quality in the spine in George Williams, Mark Sneed, Andy Ackers, um, Jack Wells, but their kicking game's going to be on the money. Oh, what's Papua New Guinea going to be like coming off their line? Yeah, they'll be coming out of tougher spots against England. What an incredible uh, first half performance. Just glimpses of what Sean Wayne's going to have to coach against next week in the quarterfinals. Well, one thing's for sure, the lady on the PA is having a, a good time this evening. She certainly, if, if her uh, loudness of her voice is anything to go by. Tomorrow, the women's tournament gets on the way. It is the biggest one we have ever had. And at the launch last week, we caught up with the coaches and the captains. It is so exciting. It's been a lot of build up to this World Cup and, you know, we're so excited and proud to be here. Um, the atmosphere is contagious right now. <laughs> There's obviously added pressure with it being a home World Cup, but I think that's a real positive for us as players. I think that's really exciting that we're going to have so many people cheering for us and behind us and wanting us to do well. We're not hiding from the fact that there's an expectation that our that our team should win. The Kiwis have been very strong for a very long time, and England are always strong. It's going to be the best Women's World Cup by a long way, I think. It's an honour to represent Brazil in South America because it is our first time in the World Cup. We are making history. They're a beautiful bunch of girls, almost like my daughters. Uh, every one of them is committed, happy, driven, and the pride is, is something, yeah. On a, on a hâte de rencontrer ces équipes euh, mondialement connues. On est très, très excité à l'idée de commencer le tournoi. We have a proud little nation that love the Cook Island flag. Um, there's always one quote that we always go by. Um, when, the, when the flag is up, the war begins. And we're all here to do one job, and that's to just play some good 44 hour nation. I don't want to have gone to the other side of the world and given up so much time this year away from my family to come here just to enjoy a bit of footy. I want to take home the World Cup. All the captains spoke about something in their life that they've had to overcome to be here at the World Cup, but that just is the passion that we have for the sport. PNG female game is still developing um, in a developing country and these girls got so much pride and passion to wear that badge on their chest. Just by us, Papua New Guinean women, just by us taking part in the World Cup, it's a win for us. We didn't have the opportunity to have uh, a, a camp before we got here, so uh, we've had one training together and one game together. Not as much preparation as we would have liked, but we've had to make do with what little resources we have. The girls are just over the moon, they just really want to get started. I think the key mood is excitement. We just can't wait for our first game to show what we can do. Success for me is just doing better than we did last time. I know the girls are, are really motivated and, and want 
that trophy at the end and then afterwards they're willing to take uh, their experience back and inspire other people to, to participate in rugby league. I think we've always had the same end goal. We want to win the World Cup and that's what we've been working towards. You know, we've never set our sights any lower than that. We're not just a home nation who's here to host. We, we want to win that World Cup. That will be the first England women's rugby league team to ever achieve that. And I think we've never been in such a strong position as we are now. So this is, you know, the, the moment to achieve it, I think. It all starts tomorrow at Headingley for England's Group A opener against Brazil. That's from 1.45 on BBC Two. Following that, it's PNG against Canada from 4.55 on the iPlayer and the BBC Sport website and app. After this match here tonight at 9.30 on BBC Two, it's Women of Steel, an Access All Areas documentary on England's preparations for this World Cup. It's also available on the iPlayer. And just to tip you off, it is well worth a watch. Then on Thursday, the Wheel wheelchair tournament gets underway and England have a great chance of winning it. They begin their campaign against Australia at the Copper Box in London. We're on BBC Two from 7 o'clock and just to remind you every match from the Rugby League World Cup is available to watch live or on catch up on the BBC iPlayer so you won't miss a thing. And away from the World Cup, if you've got time for anything else, the World Gymnastics Championships gets underway tomorrow and our coverage of the women's team final begins at 5.45 on the iPlayer before moving over to BBC Three at 5 past 7. Danica, we cannot wait, can we, for the women to get underway? I know, just seeing that then, it makes me so excited. I think the growth of the women's game, not only here in England, but across the world, you know, in the NRL now, you've got Cook Islands, New Zealand, Australia, um, and Papua New Guinea now. There's women that go over to the NRL uh, in Australia and get paid to play, which is massive. We've had four of the French girls come and play in the, in the Super League over here, and Brazil. They're hosting five girls that played in the Olympics in the sevens tournament. So there's just such a massive depth of athleticism, and that's the strongest World Cup we've ever, ever had. And I think it's the best place that England are going to be in at the minute to, to go forward and win that. York's a beautiful city, isn't it? Oh, it is. Where the launch was. It looks incredible. So I think we're really excited for the tournament to get going. England have got a tough job. Uh, Australia brings some real quality and athletic ability and a play of the game at a speed at which I've not seen us play domestically over here. That being said, it's going to be interesting and exciting and, and put the women's game right at the forefront of World Rugby League, which is what we've all been talking about, where it should be. That's We're it. going to have to wait for more on that tomorrow because it is time to get the second half underway. We're going to be back to your Coventry team. Jonathan Davis, Robbie Underpool and Dave Woods. Well, once more into the breach for the Welsh here. Can the Dragons roar a little in this second half, produce a little bit of flame to just end this tournament with something to remember? Or does it carry on being a Papua New Guinean carnival here? They have played so well in building up that 24-0 lead. And we are so excited because it feels like the World on, Cup starts from tomorrow we've, we've had the men's group games and there's been some one-sided matches there's been some memorable games as well but tomorrow the women's world cup kicks off and then the wheelchair and then the quarterfinals at the weekend it is uh, delicious so mouth watering but we've got 40 minutes here to enjoy before we get on to that in papi had a dummy half papa new guinea looking to drive forward again simbican will climb to his feet and play it here comes Labour. Labour gets the kick away, but a kick pressure on him from Fossard. Oh, that's a brilliant kick because it's bounced just a foot inside. It was um, it was left by Reese Williams because he thought it was going to go out on the full, but it's not. It's bounced and Wells will get it, but only ten from the own line. You know the simple skill there is just to put your foot over the line and touch the ball. You don't even have to catch it. Put your foot over the line and just touch it, and the ball's out. Yeah. Best answers you've ever given that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And if you do catch with your foot in play, you're going to get smashed into the top. <laughs> Uh, let's let's go down to the touchline because I think uh, David Johnson is rather wet and betrayed at the moment. As, uh, oh, hang on! Before we do, let's just watch Papua New Guinea trying to launch another attack here. Lenny McDonald. Surrender. So let's watch this play out here because PNG could be poised. They've got six tackles to have a go. Dan Russell driving it in. Chester, gotta let go. 
Into dummy half goes Ipape again. Lining up on that left-hand side. Lamb drops it back on the inside. Putt with the effort. Welsh with the response. Ipape delivering again. Another big burst of energy. It's over the line as he got it down. No. He's held up. Good tackle, though. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's always a test of a defensive hard, isn't it? Wait for the whistle. Yeah. efforts like that. So here they come again. Laybutt. Martin, he's lost the ball. Wales have it back. Stolen again. Another penalty. Another penalty. Pressure's mounting. It's a tough one, there. Yeah, because you're taught to lock the ball up. Yeah, two in the tackle there, though, so... So, Papua New Guinea Connor, setting up Don't base camp here as they look to climb another mountain and get themselves another try. It's into the hands of Johnston. Good tackle, like But that, that has been lost. And the referee says one-on-one. -on -one. And he's given head and feed to Papua New Guinea. So Welsh hands on that legally, but they knocked it forward. I mean, it's some great defence by Wales. You know, they're hustling, they're moving, they're getting across in the space. And Papua New Guinea are testing them. They're hitting the lead runner, they're hitting the guy out the back, and Wales still haven't come unstuck. But how many back-to-back -back sets can you defend? Well, this is draining energy, isn't it? Early in the second half, and Wales can ill afford to have that energy drained. They need every ounce to get themselves through the rest of this game. Here's Olam, and he's going to be just dragged down just in. short. Gets up and plays. Here comes another wave of attack. Ipapi makes himself a fairly easy target for those Welsh defenders, and that's a little bit of a defensive win for Wales, but it doesn't count for much because Papi New Guinea come back again. Labut trying to put the footwork on. They're not buying it. They're not buying it. In with the tackles. Ipape switching left again. Big effort from Simbikin. Crash to the ground, but they're getting closer and closer. Ipape wants more. Spinning it to Labour. Labour throws it back to Lamb. Lamb to the fullback Johnston, who's in the line. Tackle. Good defensive effort from Kia. Good tackle by Kia. Back it comes to Ty. Maybe a little greedy and trying to go for himself. Play the ball for the worst. So. He's been on tenter hooks for a few minutes now. Damien Johnson, what, is, what have they been telling you? <laughs> Soaking wet down here, as you say, Dave. Didn't know you cared, actually. Uh, John Keir at half-time, happy with the defensive effort, particularly on the goal line. And we've seen the evidence of that at the start of this uh, second half. Need to be better with the ball, uh, finish our sets more strongly. Uh, PNG, delighted with the first half performance. Keep running hard, we've defended well as well. Uh, and keep them to nil, that would be such a boost going into the quarter-final. That's a big defensive effort from Papua New Guinea. Wales can't get off the line. They're pushed back behind their line. It means they have to drop out underneath their sticks. It means all things being equal. And remember, this is a very wet night, but Papua New Guinea should get the ball back here. Yeah, another set. Kind of actually going to go short here as well. Just bang it as long as you can. They're taking as long as they can. There's a shot clock which tells them they've only five more seconds to take this, but they're taking as long as they can to get the oxygen back in the lungs because it's another way of Papi New Guinean attack, led by Dan Russell. The whole of this second half so far seems to have been played in this patch of grass. Papi New Guinea haven't yet added to the half-time score, but they're threatening again. Ipape comes back towards the middle, and Alec, Jacob Alec, Ipape skids it left, Lamb! And he's going to reach as he knows he's not. No, he's not. Oh, he's not far away, but he's not going to be able to put the ball down. Good effort from the Welsh defence. Another big crash, bang, wallop effort. And this time it is Nixon Putt who gets over the line to score. There was a sense of inevitability about all of that. The Welsh can defend, but for how long can they defend? Well, in the end, they run out of juice. And Nixon Putt is there to force his way over. That's right, it becomes an energy game at the end of the day. Too much thrown at Wales. Wales were taking wave after wave, sucking it all in. But at some point, it's, something's got to give. 
there. We saw it in the first half. Nixon Puck just running that big, hard line, using his power. And this is you know, this is a great example of, you know, not only are they coming out here to be strong uh, with the ball in hand, but also big, strong defensively as well. Oh, big, that's, a, that's a big cut here. You don't have to do a cut. Yeah, same as similar to his first try, just dynamic power. But again, you know, on, when he got when he got the turnover to, to get the run the ball out, unfortunately, when you run too high against the Pavan again, you they get below you, they hold you up and they all drive you back. You've got to go and try and hit the deck as soon as you can. We were talking about them, they're low to the ground, especially guys like Nixon Putt. He's he's a short squat type of player, slow centre of gravity, but extremely powerful. We travelled to Papua New Guinea when uh, the spear tackle was legal. <laughs> and let me tell you, that was fun over there. <laughs> the grounds are hard. Grounds you are were, little, hard, you yeah. were drilled into it. There goes Martin with kick number five. Five out of five, 30 points to nil. And uh, Nixon popped the latest try scorer, Stanley Tepen, the coach there. What a good job he's doing. He's the assistant coach of the Hunter Mariners. He was assistant to Michael Marum at the World Cup five years ago, but uh, Michael Marum's gone into politics. So. Stanley Tepen has taken over and he's doing a good job. I think he had a word at them at half time. There'd be no push passes in this opening 10 minutes of the game. Everything's been kept up tight. They've been patient and they're going to get their rewards. The simple thing the pack, the public Guinea pack is, is dominant. So why, in, in these conditions, try and push passes? They're just going direct. They're playing, they've got, they, they get an easy yardage, good kicking game. They're having the ball back in the, in the Welsh half. You cannot understand how many parties they'll be going on in Papua New Guinea at the moment. And if you are watching us in Papua New Guinea, I hope you're really enjoying this. They, they are so passionate about this sport. So many isolated tribes within the country who walk for days just to find a television set to watch a game when they know their heroes are playing. And so many different languages spoken in that country. I think it's over 200, over 300 languages. I know we talked to Rhys Martin at the last World Cup and he was saying some of the boys speak different languages to each other within the squad. But they're all speaking the same language at the moment. It's the language of rugby league. <laughs> it's an awful cliche. And the language of winning. I was wondering how you're going to get up to that. But they are fluent. <laughs> they are fluent as well. Oh, and I'm still not sure if you did. Oh, there's a moment. There's a moment. Here comes Antrobus. In to dummy half goes Ollie Olds. Just smashed in by Dan Fleming. Admire the effort by these Welsh players. They're only hiding to nothing at the moment. Ralph goes right. Aiken spins it out. Here's Will Evans. Just a little bit there, you know, the pass is just on the side of him. You've got to check to take it. You know, when you're running against a tough defence, you've got to have the ball in front. Little things make such a big difference. Kick downfield will find Roderick Ty, an eager collector of that bouncing ball. And uh, runs it back. Just like missiles, aren't they? they just move at speed, flying rocks, boulders bouncing down the field. Alex Johnson. Could have been a top level yeah, cricketer, Alex play. Johnston. I'm glad he's chosen Guys, rugby league because he'd have been playing right. cricket on a night like this, wouldn't he? He runs, he runs well, Jim, doesn't he? Connor, Packing him behind the ruck every yeah, time. Wessa Tenza making his debut tonight in at dummy half. Is Wessa 30 years of age? It's been a long time coming, but he's pulled on that famous shirt tonight for the very first time. Oh, he'll be loving it. He's jogging over into position. Tenzer again. Here's Labour. Labour high. Huge, huge. Aikens underneath it. But he's taken it well. Great take that is under pressure. That's a lonely place to be when all you can see in your peripheral vision is those yellow jumpers coming at you. And the foot, you can, all you can hear is the footsteps, Jeffy. Well, they may be now, because they've got a penalty. Some of the numbers are stacking up. Over a 1,000 metres that Papua New Guinea have made now. Compare that with the 500 that Wales have made so far. Yeah, the big one, you know, play the ball in the opposition 20 metres. Papua New Guinea 37, Wales 6. That just shows the dominance. Go, 
So Wales looking to see if they can venture inside their opponent's half for the first time here tonight. In the second half at least. Here's Bozard. An offer by Ralph, and then he'll decide to try and take them on himself. And some more bus defence oh, coming so in. Hozard. Well, they've West got a bit of, bit of a foothold now. Bit of a foothold, and with um, tackles to go, what can they make of it? Connor Davis, who's on for the interchange bent. Aikens pushing off a couple of those defenders. Here comes Connor Davis again. Immediately wrapped around. Two to go. Two plays to go. Tackle four. Back it up, Connor. Connor Davis is trying to steal a yard or two there. The referee says go back and play it where you were tackled. Here's Ralph. Really put down. Play on, play on. Here we go. <laughs> Come on, get off him. Get off him. Let him play the ball. Now they go. Little dummy shown by Ralph. Ralph with a kick. Oh, Chance to nothing. Here we go. Here we go, but Johnston suddenly finds players in front of him and just as well. It all seems a bit rushed, doesn't it, from Wales' point of view? Yeah, yeah, of course. wasn't quite No, of course you're right, you know. It, it, they've just been beating every department. They've got to try and create something and make a defence, make a mistake, but they just haven't got, you know, those, that quick play the ball or the, the guile at half-back to do it. 27 minutes to play. Papua New Guinea looking to pile on the pressure to remind you or to tell you if you weren't with us in the first half. They will be playing against England at Wigan. 2.30 kickoff on Saturday afternoon. That's going to be a great occasion. It really is. Last play. Here comes the kick from Lachlan Lamb. Underneath it, it's taken superbly well. Is that Kyle Evans on that far side? And here he comes. Wow, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. Fantastic by Evans. Still going, still going. Great run. There's his partner, enjoying the moment. Williams. Just inside the PNG half. Antrobus. Runs it hard again. Matty Bozard stands and waits at Dummy Hart. Oh, a bit of a juggle, but they keep a hold. Lloyd, I think it was, who's just about kept a hold of it. So the Welsh, again, have a bit of a platform here. What can they make of it? It's a, a reach and a take by Ralph. He's done well there. Difficult pass to take. Just testing this Papua New Guinea defence. Yeah, just needed really something to run the angle there. The pass had beaten the, the defender. Just needed something to cut back. Ollie Olds trying to slide it through. It ricochets. It's knocked on. Wales will get it back here. They'll get the ball back. And they're fewer than 20 yards away from their opponent's line. Well, this will be good for Wales because they're not under pressure. They're out, out of their own 20 metre. They're going to have patience now and just yeah, the go through their, their drills and training. If it doesn't come, then they've got to try and get a repeat set and just keep them here for a little bit. John Keir barking down the orders. Wales getting a little excited. I tell you what, wasn't that a great bit of, bit of skill that started that set? With Carl Evans just Evans. catching the ball yeah. on the on the hop. Am I right in thinking that he's a free agent at the moment? Yes, he is. He's I tell you what, Super League club lineup, championship club lineup. Three appearances for Wakefield last year. He's almost played more for Wales, but he has in Super League. Well, here come Wales. What can they put on here? Callum Aikens at dummy half. Can they create something to remember this tournament by? Less than ten now. First half. Spinning it to that right-hand side. Olds helps it on. Over the top it goes. Oh, it's picked up by Evans. Kyle Evans eventually. Will Evans nearly got there. But it's Kyle Evans who picks it up. In the gloom and the rain of Doncaster. The Welsh trying to create a bit of sunshine. Ralph again. Going left. Loads of tackles. Fossard slips in at dummy half. Ralph picks it up. Quick hands. Quick hands from Olds. Too quick for Antrobos. And Rhys Martin will bring it clear for Papua New Guinea. They've got to switch on now. He's 10. Oh, Marcus Square, Caleb. Go zero. 
first flick was good. It was a catch that yeah. just let them down. It's no full back at home for Wales now. Quick, big kick and chase. They could be in here. Only not, just getting back. They're not kicked and chased since 1988, Jonathan. That's, oh, that's, that's your, your no way. There's no way. Why shouldn't they? There's no full back at home for the first two tackles. For a long kick in your score. Just in when you've got someone like Nutflick in your team as well. <laughs> just in all of them. Yeah. You, you don't need to kick and chase when you've got just in all of them. Yeah, we, we are chariots, mate. Dragging them through. Go three. So Papua New Guinea Bailey, find please. themselves 20 metres away. It's Wessa Tenza. Lachlan Lamb back on the inside to kick it through. that kick from the. Uh, Lay but the standoff, and it's just about scramble to safety. Oh, oh no, no, came last off Papua New Guinea, so it'll be a tap back on the 20. That was, that was a kick and chase. That was a kick and chase. There we are, look, nearly we scored, yeah. nearly scored. Yeah. Oh no, it's a penalty, it's a penalty. It's not a, it's a penalty for a, an impediment in the chase there. Yeah, good read by Kyle Labert there. You could see Rhys Martin was just getting upstream, wanting him to kick, so he put the ball in behind. He was able to draw defenders to him. Get the penalty. But just look how far they've come with that set. Yeah, there's a, a kick by Wales, 20 inside of 20 metres, 10 metres from the Welsh line. Well, this will be a test for that Welsh defence because Papua New Guinea are in the mood for more points here. Wessatenza spinning it out at only half. This might be his World Cup tonight, right here, but that was poor. Shift to the left hand side. Yeah, poor pass. He was so clinical, you know. So Sydney, that left hand attack for so Sydney, so so good. They just lost their shape a yeah. little bit here. They didn't have any lead runners. Everybody was on the same wave. Yep. Oh. Plenty of numbers as well. And this isn't the condition to do a three man cutout oh, pass. No. Well, I, was, I was going to ask you to. Chris, if you put it behind the player. The, the first half, Papua New Guinea looked fantastic. They looked like, right, they're ready for that challenge against England. Can you play yourself out of form in a game? Can you lose a bit of confidence because you lose a bit of shape? I think you get a bit looser, you know, with the conditions. You're 30 points up. And the scoreline, yeah. A scoreline, you're just going to throw passes you wouldn't throw normally. Different combinations come in. Combinations where, you know, Step in. What at, the, at this point in time, the PNG coaching staff, they're thinking about their next game. Yeah, and they won't be, they can't not make enforced errors against England. They just can't not. You know, England are a different level to Wales. Australia v Lebanon. Quarterfinals, New Zealand against Fiji. Tonga against Samoa. with the feed right. balls held in the scrum move to that right hand side this is Aikens Caleb Aikens so we'll start a set inside their opponent's half I really admit I'd be nervous if I was running anywhere near Justin Ola moment if you've not seen him playing the Melbourne Storm he fires out of that gun like a cannon and he absolutely smashes people oh. there's a few smashes shot. going on Penalty, high tackle. Easy, easy. That's one up. thing they'll have to control is, you know, their discipline. Probably yeah, beginning against England. Just high shot oh. again. So a set of six. A set of six inside their opponent's half. What can they do from here? Joe Burke leads the charge. The West Wales Raider prop forward. Now it goes with Ralph. He'll get it back. No, he won't. He pops over his head. But Wales still have possession here. Still an opportunity. Ollie Olds. Inside again for Bailey Antrobus. Antrobus pushing hard. Labour kept a hold. But look where Wales are now. That's how close to glory. Can they get themselves over this line? Papua New Guinea going to be tested here. With Olds. Plenty of tackles. Olds. Spinning it back to the middle. Walker helps it on its way. Ralph now with a kick towards the corner. It's going to be caught, is it? No, it's not. It's, it's rescued on that far side. <laughs> well, they crash into the advertising hoardings, but a, a friendly little shake of the hands there between uh, Evans and Nutley. Wales again, another goal, though. Yeah, an early kick. You know, defence was, uh, was narrow. Great recovery by fucking left winger. So a drop out. And again, bear in mind it's a greasy ball, but not in mind this should be Wales back in possession and is. And here comes Anthony Walker with a big run up. He 
came from the fence and came smashing in. Great to see him at this World Cup. His um, problems before the last World Cup, well documented with the illness. But the Welsh now in possession and in position. It's a rare opportunity again here. Olds to Ralph. Back on the inside comes Lloyd. Still tackles in the bag. Curtis Davis rolls in at dummy half. Josh Ralph has possession again here. Ollie Olds now brings it to this left-hand side. This is Caleb Atkins. Inside for Keir. Elliot Keir. Little flick of the heels. Can he find a way to run through? No, he can't. It's just a solid wall that moves very alarmingly towards him and puts him down. Curtis Davis starts again. Oh, the ball's gone backwards. But they keep possession. Joe Burke offloads. This is Ralph. Ralph. Papua New Guinea being pushed hither and thither, but they keep they keep firm in defence. This is the last play. Ralph is slow to his feet. It comes with Olds. Olds just slides it through into the ring goal area and it's shuffled away. It's another drop yeah, underneath the that's, sticks. That's better from Wales. That's it. If you go and break him down, get a repeat set. That's the goal, right? Try and draw a little bit of energy out of them. They're throwing a lot of shape at Papua New Guinea at the moment. Papua New Guinea are able to deal with it. But when you have to do that for a second set, a third set, that's when it becomes mission impossible. So here Patience comes they need. The drop, and here comes Looks another straight. Welsh wave of attack. Anthony Walker now slamming it forward again. Plays the ball. Here now comes Connor Davis. Platform being set again here by the Welsh. What can they work off the back of it? Curtis Davis spinning it for Olds. Olds now back it goes over the top and out of out of reach. Oh, it's been dropped. It's not gone. Dropped by Roderick Ty. But it was an initial forward pass. The referee decides. So a scrum down Papua New Guinea head and feet. And that's disappointing for Wales. You know, we were talking about they need to show some patience. Good setup, good shape, good space. But as you were saying before, Jiffy, the ball's got to go out in front. It's got to be a nice, clean catch in these conditions. It's been atrocious conditions tonight. So, for that respect, you've got to respect the ball. You've got to make sure everything is perfect when you're passing it. Well, here come Papua New Guinea. Down comes the rails. Not stopped, has it? Absolutely hammering down. And, and I don't know if it was going to be a night when, in these conditions, we we're going to see a load of handling errors. But, I mean, we see one or two, but not as many as you might have thought. You could argue there'd be more forced handling errors uh, rather than just clean drops. Yeah, I don't think unfortunately for Wales, the only thing where they are going to score is by, by your kick. Good kick. In goes Emmanuel Wayne, the prop forward. Inviting four red shirted Welshmen to get around him and make the tackle. Little skip and a jump on that left hand side again. This time by Jeremiah Simbican. Another of the debutants tonight. Kick is high, Keir underneath it. It's going to be picked up though by Reese Williams, who is barely in his stride before Reese Martin has him around the shoulders and helped by Kyle Label. It'd be lovely to see Reese Williams score a try here tonight. He's the, uh, the record-breaking Welsh try scorer, 22 in his, tonight his 34th appearance, but he's never scored a World Cup try. Bit of a collector's item, he's not got one yet. Yes. Can he put that right here? Good carry. Yeah, again. Evans again. Kyle Evans again. Okay. Kia. Guys, pitches another yard or two as he picks himself up. Here comes Reese Williams. I know once he breaks the line, he's capable of going the distance, whatever the distance. So, Papua New Guinea have to be careful when they're dealing with him. Ralph's kick. Johnston's across there. Ball like glue sticks to his hands. But the worst good defense change. is good. That's good. Here we are. Stand up now. 11 minutes to play. They've not had it all their own way in this second half. This has been a wonderful response by the Welsh. It's been a great, a, a gritty defensive performance in the second half. They've been under the cosh for a long, long time to start the second half. You know, they've rolled, rolled with it, and now they've had a little bit of possession and field position. Good performance, good second half performance. 
Well, they're making making a little bit of progress here. Here it is, Bailey. Go for. This is Rhys Martin, who's just inside his opponent's half before they push him back. And on the last play, Papua New Guinea. We'll have to look for the kick from Labour. He has to be quick because the uh, the runners were coming towards him. He's got it away. Oh, Evans, Carl Evans has knocked it backwards. Now, what can he turn this into? Not much because the defence is there waiting for him. Don't forget you two, by the way, you're picking the player of the match. Yeah. So we'll, we'll wait that with interest. Ten minutes to play. Few of those Papua New Guineans would have caught your eye. There'll be one or two Welsh as well. But you can never give a player of the match award to a team that have been beaten as heavily as this, can you? So I think it's going to be a Papua New Guinean player. I think, yeah, I think Kyle Evans has played well. You know, he hasn't had much, much opportunity, but put up in his hand, he's done well. That will show your way to Welsh bias if you give it no, a No, 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 there is no way. The <laughs> Antibus has run hard as well, but yeah. no, it's got to come from the, the PNG side. Well, keep it, keep it. We'll reveal that a little later. No spoilers at this stage. For the five minutes yet. Stop asking me then. OK. Holes <laughs> with a kick towards the corner. Good position on there by Johnson. Who immediately throws it inside. There's a, a knock-on from Nutlick. That's an easy take as well. Blame the weather. That's one of those takes where you're already looking and thinking about where you're going to run before you catch it. There you just have a little look. In these conditions, you can't do that. Just have a little look. It's a schoolboy error from the 20-year-old and it's given the Welsh a great position again. Just a try. That's all they want. Just a try. Here they come, working it towards that right-hand side. Rob puts it out. Good and feet. Callum Aikens, Aikens, threatening something special. Offside. Yeah, it's a differential penalty. They're asking if they can play the ball back at the scrum. The referee says no. You play the ball when I tell you. You tap yeah. it from there. So here they come again. Here they come again. Can they get through this Papua New Guinean wall of defence? Resistance has been brilliant. Denian, the first to have a go. Short pass again. Trying to burrow their way over. Can't get in. Will Evans gives way to allow Curtis Davis to take over in the dummy half position. Walker. Walker. Well, that would have been a moment if he'd have managed to get through. But he couldn't. So Wales go left this time. It's with Ollie Olds. Olds and Old Kid has it knocked out of his hands with the sheer weight of the tackle. But backwards and Aikens can pick it up. And Aikens saw a gap and then bang, bang, the shoulders came in left and right. So he was stopped. Davis again. Just trying to push. Just trying to push back. Oh. Great defensive yeah. effort from Russell, Russell. Russell had him there. Russell hustling there. And had to be. There's still an opportunity, and on the last play, it's wasted, I think, Curtis Davis going out from Dolly Half, and a big pat on the back again for Dan Russell for his defensive efforts there. Yeah, that face says it all, I think. It's just one of those things when you're a hooker, they just can't help themselves, can they? They've got to have a charge. White line fever. But not a bad place to start a set defensively, right? Half a metre off the try line. Yeah, but when you're losing 30-0, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not much consolation, is it? I'm <laughs> trying to find silver line. I think oh, they've knocked oh, it again. Go. They've knocked it again. Wales get another go. I tell you, the, the roof will come off this place yeah. if Wales can score a try. They need another roof, to be honest, tonight, with the weather. You get that feeling, it's a bit like when uh, Jamaica was playing against New Zealand, you were just willing them to score a try. Come on, Wales, you can do it. They've had two fantastic performances at this World Cup. They were underdogs right from the start. They came so close to making the Cook Islanders. They really pushed Tonga in a way that Tonga might not have expected. Wales with Curtis Davis. This is Ralph. Drops it back on the inside. A spin and a hit by Denyon. Now it's with Davis again. Short pass. Big effort. 
Connor Davis. It's Curtis behind him. Walker helps it on. Papua New Guinea just soaking this up. And good defence there. Just pushing back at everything Wales throw at them here. Rodri Lloyd plays. Curtis Davis skips out. It's with Ralph. Ralph switches it to that right hand side. Kyle Evans. Oh, he's lost the ball. Kyle Evans. Thought he was over. And I tell you, he wasn't far away. But he didn't have the ball with him when it really mattered. Yeah, great effort. Look, good angle, comes inside. I thought he just got to get down. A scrum for defence just gets him, loses possession as he's going over the line. He's not doing too bad in traffic, isn't he? He's not doing too bad. He cut his ball very well. Powerful and you've, uh, you've, you've made your decision now, Jiffy. Yeah, we have. You know, the Kazoo player of the match is Nixon Putt. Scored two tries. He's run hard, he's defended very, very well. I think he had his, uh, his head up someone's backside there with a scrum, didn't he? Yeah, so he we, did. Uh... Where is he off the field at the moment? Yeah, so he's on the bench at the moment. He's done the damage. They're saving him, aren't they? They got a big game on the weekend. There he is. There he is. The kazoo player of the match. Well done to Nixon Putt. Yeah. Here's Wesser Tenter out of Dunny Hall. Some of these Papua New Guineans are really enjoying themselves here tonight. Most of them really enjoying themselves here tonight. Set the platform in the first half with a wonderful display. Snuffed out any Welsh hopes of sneaking through the back door of qualification with that early try from Labour. And since then they've been in command. Labour it is now who puts the ball up in the air. Kyle Evans. Oh, it's bounced away from him. They're queuing up here. They're queuing up, and they're over for another. Nutlick, he went a long way to score his first. He hardly had to travel for his second. And Papua New Guinea with their sixth try of the night. Yeah, again, a very, very good kick. They've had some great hang time on their up and unders that Papua New Guineas have. That was a spiral punch, Jeffrey. Yeah. Have you stood under one of them before? It was, yes, I have. Oh, they're horrible, aren't Not they? Nice. They come down, trajectory oh. up, they, it floats away from you. And it's very difficult. He puts it in between the full back and the wing, and the bounce is horrendous. He doesn't get to it. That's a good chase. Good, good chase. He's hit it perfectly. It's gone up. It started spiraling. You say so Evans there. He would have thought at first, yeah, I got this. And as the ball comes down, it just bends away from yeah, him. Yeah, I'd have thought where that came down, I think the full back should have been there. Carly Viking should have been there. It's a long way for the winger to come when he's got a, you know, that backfield to cover as well. And, I, and I'm guessing that he would have thought it was going to go too, because that's the thing about spiral punts. They just do not follow a trajectory that you'd expect them to. They go all over the place. And obviously, we're in these conditions, it's not a bad tactic. Well, he doesn't look very cheerful at the moment, does he, Stanley Tepin? But, um... you know, what's happened here today is that when they've gone back to basics, just in that set there, just a few great carries, just dominated the midfield, powered over, quick play the ball, you know, put the ball in the air, try time. So here comes Martin to add another two, and he does just that. He's very often a 100% kicker, and that's those are his stats here today. John Keane, the Welsh coach. Rather forlornly going down to the touchline. Nine his side, well beaten tonight by a terrific Papua New Guinean team. I have to, I have to give credit to the Welsh players. You know, you know they, they come from lower divisions. They've had the toughest group with a lot of full-time pros in it, and they have done extremely well. Jimmy Nutlick's having the time of his life. Wales went short with a kick-off. And their reward is possession back again. Here comes Walker, picking up the speed and brushing them off. The big Welsh Royals going up now around Doncaster. A minute and 15 to go. Can they get this try? Ralph on that right-hand side. Taken on again by Lloyd. Spinning and offloading and keeping it alive. Wales still with an opportunity. Benyon now. Dragged to the ground. 
five tackles to go. They've got time to get through all five tackles. Ralph again. Oh. Bundled up and bundled down. Curtis Davis spinning it left. Ollie Olds step inside by Antrobus. Less than eight metres to cover. But look at those big bodies in front of them that provide a formidable resistance. Maybe they can chip over the top of them. Ralph puts it up, but it's taken down by Nutlick. Nutlick a try scorer on a couple of occasions. He's a try saver on this. Yeah. He was waiting for it, wasn't he? I mean, that play is a little bit telegraphed at the moment. And again, no, none of hang time. You know, just didn't have enough time for the players to compete for it. It's been a gritty performance, though. It's a gritty performance from Wales. Well, a terrific effort from the Welsh throughout this World Cup. But tonight we've seen a class performance in the rain here in Doncaster by Papua New Guinea, who now head off for a quarter-final tie against England on Saturday afternoon. What a job he's doing, Stanley Teppen, and his players on the field as well. Managed to give debuts to some of them tonight. Some of the superstars in those PNG ranks have also delivered. It might be raining and miserable in Doncaster, but there'll be parties going on all over Papua New Guinea right now. They've reached the quarterfinals in style, and they will fancy their chances against England on Saturday. Yeah, you know, they're coming up against a different proposition, a very, very confident England side. And if, you know, their attacking play has been absolutely brilliant, but you know, England will go up another level. Papua New Guinea will be the toughest they've, they've faced so far in the work. I thought some more were poor against uh, against England. So, yeah, I think the Papua New Guinea will bring something different. It'll be a big test for England. Well, we're going to hear from Nixon Pop in just a second, the uh, the player of the game. But an embrace, end of the road for the Welsh. They've had a good time of it, but all good things must come to an end. Papua New Guinea winning by 36 points to nil here. Six tries and six goals. Let's hear from the player of the match right now. Nixon Pott. Kazoo player of the match, Nixon Putt. Congratulations. That was a pretty professional performance from PNG tonight, wasn't it? Yes, um, I think we've been working to, uh, really hard for the week, the whole week. It was a short turnaround, so yeah, the boys really dip in for each other and then, yeah, we got the win. What was the most satisfying element of the performance for you? Uh, for me, it's just, just run hard, run hard and tackle hard, that's just for me. A couple of tries for you, good night. Yeah, it was really like, it's my first World Cup, scored double, so yeah, I'm really happy. What were conditions like there, watching from the touchline, they looked terrible. Ah uh, yeah, it's uh, the ball is slippery, but uh, we all the boys like rip into it, all the ball. So yeah. We're just looking at some pictures now of the uh, Welsh players over there with the PNG players. A real brotherhood, real connection. If you just look over your shoulder there. Yeah. Yeah, it is like we've always like brothers, like Pacific brothers, and what they're doing is like brotherhood brings us together. So yeah. England in the quarterfinals now. What are your thoughts? Um. Yeah, we're going to have a good game with England. We beat them back in New Guinea, so we are really like looking forward for that match. So we're going to have a good one. Well done tonight, Nixon. Yeah, thank you. John Keir, just a word of congratulation with uh, Nixon Putt. Uh, John, uh, my word, you've given us some entertainment in this, uh, this World Cup, but um, came up short tonight. Yeah, I thought the first half were pretty poor. I, I thought we, we gave a better count in the second half. But our, our kicking game was indifferent, and in the first half we gave so many six against penalties and headers. We just didn't give ourselves a chance. We didn't do the basics well. But the, all the time they worked hard for each other in defence, and uh, I think they've done that throughout. And the second half was much better. You said this was the group of death when it was first drawn all those months ago. Uh, was the physical nature of it perhaps what took it out of you? It could have been, a, yeah, very much so, because with this type of weather, there's only one way you can go, and it's very direct and. Uh, I think that probably suited uh, the Papuans more, more than us because uh, they play the game very physically and it certainly worked out for them. And uh, I think the number of barge tries that they got as well indicates that also. 
You're going to go into the dressing room now and address the players for a final time uh, at this World Cup. But what's the debrief going to be about? The debrief is that second half was much better, more like us. And I, overall, over the tournament, I'm really pleased because we've had three very, very difficult teams and we've given a good account of ourselves in, I would say, two and a half games. What next for Wales then? You have to qualify for the next tournament. Yeah, we'll look forward to that. These are a good group of guys and uh, they've improved over this month because we've had a full-time environment, basically. So uh, we'll certainly dust ourselves down and, and have a bit of pride and then get ready to rock and roll for the uh, whatever comes up next year. You brought us great entertainment, John Weldon. Thank you, Damien. Thank you. The uh, Papua New Guinea coach, Stanley Tepen, just having a quick word with John, about to step in. Stanley, uh, you must be delighted to be to be through to the quarterfinals. First off, yeah. Um, look, we uh, had a, a plan to um, do well in the pool stages and um, get through the quarterfinals. So we've done that. So uh, go back and um, work hard um, again and refocus on the quarterfinals. But the boys did well today. Important to keep uh, Wales to nil. But the second half, you did go off the boil a little bit, did you? Yeah, look, we um, spoke about that, that at half time. We wanted to keep going, uh, but obviously we defended more sets uh, in the second half there. But look, credit to the boys. They defended um, their trial line there for, um, you know, a, 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 lo a lot of times there. So it um, just means that they're playing for each other, which is a good sign. We think back of some terrific Papua New Guinea players, people like Stanley Jean from all those years ago. But is this current squad the best that Papua New Guinea have had? Yeah, look, we respect the players in the past and the squads in the past, but um, yeah, this this uh, team here, uh, they've got really got a good um, uh, feeling about it, 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 you know, and we've spoken about it, but not um, too much. We're not, we just want to focus each game, but this yeah, this um, squad is special, and um, hopefully we can um, you know uh, win next week as well. What do you have to do to beat England? Because you have to raise it again, aren't you? Yeah, look, um, obviously, um, you know, England's uh, a really, really good team um, and it'll be a big test for us, but look, we'll go back and um, uh, get ourselves right, um, rest up and um, yeah, just work at things that we need to improve on. Have you got the players to beat England, to trouble them? I think we do. Um, look, I know the players will be up for the challenge and um, yeah, we'll give it everything to um, yeah, get the win. Well done, Stanley. Thank you. So here's confirmation of how the men's quarterfinal lineup looks. Group B winners Australia take on Group C runners up Lebanon on Friday. England top Group A. So that's confirmation of uh, Tonga on top of Group D. And all the results there with uh, Wales being beaten by Papua New Guinea this evening. That confirms them into second place, which means that they will take on England on Saturday. So here is confirmation of that quarter-final lineup. Australia taking on Group C runners-up Lebanon on Friday. Confirmation there that England will take on Papua New Guinea on Saturday afternoon. Group C winners New Zealand face Group B runners-up Fiji on Saturday evening. And the Group D winners Tonga face Group A runners-up Samoa. That's an absolute belter on Sunday afternoon. All of those matches are across BBC's 1, 2 and 3. And of course, they're available to watch on the iPlayer and the BBC Sport website and app.